Hello again. How you doing? Okay. Um, okay, so this will be a quick one. <laughs> Famous last words, right? So, AAF files. <clears throat> this is a Pro Tools class, so I'm not going to dive into Premiere because this is something that you should learn in a Premiere or Media Composer class. Or, through the tutorials, I put up two tutorials for Premiere and two tutorials for Media Composer on exactly how to do this. But I'm going to show you how to do it. <clears throat> From Premiere or how I did it from Premiere just so you have an idea of what an AAF is so here I am in Adobe Premiere I'm a video editor um, I have edited my files this is my cool little action movie it's it's looking really good I'm loving it etc etc boom so first thing I got to do is this number one Make sure my time code starts on time. So right here uh, on the sequence tab, I go up to start time. I want this to start at one hour zero 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 um, because the sound editor, I want it to be clear for them where their time code should start. Why? Because if this time code started at a random number and their time code started at a random number and then they and then after their mix is done, they exported it back to me. A, I know this file, I know this project really well, so it probably won't be an issue. But B, if it's a very long project or if there are multiple people working on the project, if the time codes between the video people and the audio people don't match, out of sync issues are just begging to happen. You do not ever want things to go out of sync. So one way to ensure they don't go out of sync is making sure that your time code for your sequence that you're exporting starts at a nice even number like one hour zero 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 and in fact that is the standard that is the industry standard regular clocks begin at zero time code clocks begin at one hour so you want to do that and that makes sure that your sequence so watch this boom starts at one hour i hit play it gets going great so i go to the beginning I select I for endpoint. I go to the end. Oop. And I select O for out point. So now my sequence has an endpoint and an out point. So I know exactly what I want to export. Go up to file, down to export, AAF. You can do OMF, but you don't get as many options. So you want AAF. OMF and AAF are two ways to export from a video program into an audio editing program like Pro Tools. But AAF is newer and more reliable. So you always want to do AAF if you have the option. Click on that. Okay. So in this case, I could choose mix down video. Yeah, I'll just keep this right here. I could choose mix down video, but I'm not going to. Why? Because one nature of AAF files is that it makes mixed down video files very, very large. What it does is it embeds an MXF video file within the AAF file and it makes it a very high resolution copy. This is a this is a 90 second movie. It will be almost a gigabyte in size if I mix down the video. If I don't mix down the video, it will be 67 megabytes in size. What I like to do, and what a lot of picture editors and sound editors prefer, is don't mix down the video in your AAF. Instead, make your AAF, export it, and then after you're done with the same in and out points, export just a regular low resolution MP4. Low resolution MP4s, are much smaller and easier to deal with than a mixed down video from an AAF file. So take my advice, it saves file space and it, it runs easier on your system if you uh, export an AAF without a mixed down video and then also export a video as a separate process uh, as a low resolution MP4 file. Um, so we'll do that after this. Okay, so mixed down video is unchecked. Uh, we don't have any tape sources. This is all done digitally on a camera with SD card. So this is 
obsolete. Breakout to mono, uh, we do want to enable that. <clears throat> Even though there are stereo files in here, we want to make everything, we want to split the stereo files into left and right mono files. Why? That's what Pro Tools wants. Pro Tools can get kind of weird when it imports stereo files from other programs. <clears throat> Um, with Media Composer, not so much. With Media Composer, because Media Composer and Pro Tools are both made by Avid, that's okay. We're in Premiere, made by Adobe. So we have to play nice with Pro Tools. So you always have to break out to mono. Render audio clip effects. I could do that. And then what I do is, if you, collect, if you select that, then you also want to select Include... Uh, clip copies without effects. So if these audio files have, say, like a compressor and some distortion and some intense reverb on them, it's going to export it with those. Sound editors won't like that. That's their job to do those effects, not the picture editor. But maybe you, the picture editor, want the sound editor to just say, hey, oh, I see what they wanted. They did it kind of badly, but I can do it better, and now I know what they want. So talk with your sound editor about whether they want you to send them the rendered audio clip affected files or not. But if you do do that, you also want to include copies of those audio files without the effects. Because what's going to happen is the sound editor is going to say, you know what? Great. that Those, those affected audio files sound great but I don't want to use them. Do you have the original files so I can do it myself, please? Oh, you do, because you included them when you export the AAF. Good job. Um, I myself, I just don't even check this. I just do all of my effects for sound in Pro Tools. So I don't even check this. Um, so it's really up to you and the sound editor. I think it's a hassle to basically send two copies of audio files to your sound editor, one with effects and one without. So I just keep it unchecked and that way it just basically sends them what's in the sequence stripped of effects. Sample rate, 48,000 kilohertz or 48,000 hertz, 24-bit. Uh, files, embed audio. I do that. What that is is I'll show you. When you uh, embed audio files, you get a copy that it'll create one file right here. That will be a .aaf file that is some sort of fairly large size, depending on how big the project is, how many tracks there are, if there's video in it or not. Remember, we don't want video in it because it makes it huge. Um, and it's all in one file. Very simple. And then in Pro Tools, what happens is Pro Tools sees it and it extracts it. It's kind of like a zip file. It kind of extracts it, takes all the audio files out, and then you're good to go. So if I choose separate audio, it'll still make an AAF file, but it will also make, let me show you. I did this before. Double click on this. It'll make an AAF file, but then it will make a whole bunch of WAV files as well that all have very weird names. So you see, here's the AAF file. It's 1.2 megabytes in size. But then it'll create all these WAV files that are all just basically the separate little cuts and clips I made in Premiere. Now, I don't like to do this because what this does is it creates new files based off the base of all of my cuts I made in Premiere, and it renames them. As you can see, it's just a bunch of random letters and your sound editor is going to get a folder full of files that is just like, what? <laughs> Whereas if you embed it, if you choose embed, um, if you choose embed, you just get this and all of your original file names are saved. And so, um, I always choose embed audio because it doesn't make a bunch of extra files with wacky names and it's easier instead it keeps the original file names just sort of in a compressed AF file which gets extracted into Pro Tools. So do that. Um, broadcast Wave, Broadcast Wave, AIF is cool too but Broadcast Wave is a standard. And then Trim Audio Files. Again this is up to you and the sound editor. Um, complete Audio Files is like Every audio file in uh, in the timeline gets obviously like for example these I'm just using a few seconds here a few seconds here a few seconds here and then 
it's uh, if I conclude the complete file, I'll get the entire file. This could be a 20 minute audio file that I'm only using 10 seconds of. That's fine. Not sound editor might want to comb through that stuff, but generally you just want to send them the trimmed audio files. Then it's just going to send them the portions, the trimmed parts of the audio files you put together in Premiere with, in this case, 48 frame handles. How many frames per second is this project? 24. It's a 20, well, it's 23.98 frames per second. So by choosing trimmed audio files, it's only going to send these clips that I've chosen with a little bit of handles on either side. 48 frames on this side, 48 frames on that side. So if it goes to the sound editor and they're like, oh, if only I had just another half second for some breathing room, or oh, you cut off when the person went, hey, I need, I need a little bit more. They've got two seconds on either side of each clip to work with, or 48 frames. So that's what all this stuff means. Uh, don't mix down video, it makes the AF really large. You want to enable breakout to mono because that's what Pro Tools prefers. Um, you want to embed the audio so everything is put into one AAF file rather than a zillion uh, randomly named WAV files. You want to keep them WAV files and you want them to be trimmed audio files with one or two second handles. I like two seconds. And then you hit OK. And then it'll ask you where you want to put it. You hit, o you hit Save and then whoosh, the AAF file is created and then you can up Pro Tools and import it as session data.